Welcome back, everybody, to the Journey to Be an Astronaut podcast, where we discuss anything and everything astronaut. So today we're talking about pretty much the main concept of the entire, you know, entire podcast, really. How do you become an astronaut? To begin, there's really three phases of this entire thing. You got preparation, application, and then selection. The most important out of all three is preparation. Prep is key as in all things. Especially, especially in this case. The preparation for this is something that can get you, you know, pushed even past the interview stage. Uh, at selection and it can really it's a thing that'll really it can really guide um, your way during the week week or so that you're um, during the week or so that you're going through your astronaut selection training I guess yeah I guess you could call it training so yeah, to prepare, this is where you collect all, like, the paperwork, all of the, you know, the resume kind of things. Um, a scuba license, a flying license, uh, super helpful, being bilingual is also super helpful. Um, that's why I'm learning Russian at right now. And... Yeah, so the scuba, advanced scuba license is important because that's what they look for, um, because during all of that, uh, during that that little chunk of time there during the week, you have a lot of time in the water where you're getting, (laughs) excuse me, you have a lot of time in the water where you're getting, um, you have the Hewitt training, you have uh, the fitness test, you have an underwater puzzle that you may have to do. This was from, I'm taking all this from 2008, uh, so Canadian selection. Uh, so it may be different if you're going for um, American or European ESA. Um, so... Yeah, and then your flying license, if you have a, if you get a fixed wing or a glider license as well, get trained up in that. That'll help you with the stress and emergency um, stuff that'll have to go down. Because during simulations and thing, things, they make things go wrong on purpose. And if you've been in a real plane and it's falling, you know, it's going down. You have to make sure that thing stays in the air, so it can help train you for the train for the simulator, the trains for the real thing, I guess. Um, all right. So, like I said, this is from the Canadian selection in May two thousand eight, and this goes. And this is another thing. Uh, to if you want to be an astronaut, really, it's going to take patience. Um, it is a year-long application process, um, just to get, you know, really in the door. And that's when you become an ASCAN and you get, uh, press release and all that stuff. But it takes a full year for them to process all of that, um, all the applicants, uh, you know, and really, well, you know, because there's just so many. Like, let's say... There was one recently in May, and I think over 20,000 different applicants all applied. All of them highly qualified. So, it's super, super selective, and it's pretty crazy. So, okay, so you've prepared, you're ready to go, you've submitted your um, online application, so this is where we go to phase one. Once you've gotten past the, um, well, this is your written application or the online application. 
Uh, the one I found was on Instagram, probably on other social media as well. Um, what they're really looking for in your written application, this they're looking for your expertise, the things you've worked on, you know, your res if you do research for what you've uh, built or what you've flown or what you've done. Though in 2008, there was a uh, Olympic athlete that ended up there, so there's a large pool of knowledge there. But there's four areas that they're really looking for, which is aviation, science, medicine, and engineering. If you can click, if you can click two of those boxes, you're probably in a good place. And this is where you get to phase two of the um, of the application phase. So this is where you have all of your medical exams. Uh, you know, you've got your medical questionnaire, you have your Air Force flight medication, or medical, because it's the closest thing to what an astronaut's going to be facing. Um, so they have, uh, you know, you have the, uh, the jet, um, the jet medicals and all that stuff. And then you have the Navy diver medical, because they're going to go into the, uh, uh, the NLB, they're going to be working, uh, they have to stay underwater for, I don't, uh, there's a period of time where they go to a small enclosed space underwater somewhere in the Gulf, and they can train, uh, the systems there. There was a story from one of the astronauts that were on Joe Rogan's podcast. Uh, he was going to the bathroom at the, during one of the, while he was under the, doing his underwater training thing. And, uh, so he's take, he's taking a number two. And then, cause it's a little air pocket outside of your, uh, you know, your pressurized little cabin. So you have to swim over to the, the toilet and then once you're there, it's a uh, kind of like a bubble almost. But what happened to this guy was he had um, a fish was a fish had come up from under, from below him and scared the crap out of him. So he just ended up uh, sprint, swimming and sprinting back to the hub. <laughs> uh, that that was really funny. I'll try to find that one as well for the references. Um, okay, so after you've been qualified medically, uh, this is where you have the interview. Um, the most important part of the interview, unlike other job interviews really, this has timed questions. So you only have, they ask a whole, a whole bunch of questions, but they really, they don't tell, get, and they don't, you have a certain amount of time slot, really. So you have to time yourself with each question to make sure you can get through all of the questions within your interview time. Uh, an example question from the video I'm referencing. Uh, imagine you've been training for years to go to the moon, and then your backup gets chosen over you. How would you respond? That's, uh... This is a pretty deep one. And then so after your interview, this is part this is where the selection begins. So you have your aptitude testing. Um and this is when you begin to meet the other candidates. This is the finalist phase usually. Oh, this is the finalist phase. This is um you know, probably 40 to 50 people um, from 20 from 20,000 plus to 40 people this is um, the top applicants of each and they're all really really good at what they do and the aptitude testing this is where they, they're looking for teamwork you have to be on for the whole week while you're working with them 
Um, and at the end of it, you get evaluated by the other candidates. And uh, this is a pretty difficult part because the people you just worked and trained with may be the reason you don't even get to go. So it's it's a tough, tough area. So they have a whole bunch of IQ tests. Psycho psychiatric tests as well to make sure you're sane. An RAF air crew, a robotics test, um, and then there's another test that has, it's kind of, you're playing three video games at once almost. So one hand you're playing one of them, the other hand you're playing different controls on a different kind of thing. And then the third one, then this was, uh, they probably change it up every time. But back in 2008, they had um, numbers flash, and every 30 to 40 seconds, they had to answer a multiple qu multiple choice question um, about the numbers they just saw, and continue to play the two g other games at the same time. Some serious multitasking. And then you have your fitness test as well. Uh, you have PT, you have... Um, they did an underwater puzzle in this one. Uh, there's probably more. And then you have aptitude phase 2. So at phase 2, you have Huet training and damage control. So Huet training is the helicopter flip over test. It's the helicopter underwater eagles training. The cockpit f gets dropped in the water, flips over, and you have to climb your way out, but j something kind of crazy is before you take your safety harness off, you have to have a plan of action before you get out of your seat. Because even if this was at night, you don't know way what you don't know which way is up or down. Um, yeah, and then you have fire, flood, and hazard training. Uh, you. They put you in a small container that they kind of fill up with water. And you have to have a pump and remove the water. You have to fix pipes. And then you have uh, evacuation training as well. That, uh, especially for hazard there. And then the fire training is pretty much what firefighters go through. Uh, you put on all the equipment. You run into a burning building. Try to pull people out. Um, this part's extremely stressful, because fire and flood, I think, are on the same day. So you're going to be hyper-stressed working with other people in tight spaces, so it's very uh, conducive to what they're looking for. And then after that, this is when the evaluations come in. Um, the other applicants will, I guess, read you. Like they do in, you know, pretty much any other kind of selection. This has been Journey to Be an Astronaut podcast. You can find all my references below, as well as some affiliate links for the equipment I use. Um, have an amazing day, Stargazers. Stay safe.